cancellation slash postponement against uh, Georgia Tech. Also the same against Wake Forest the last two weekends, but Duke is available and therefore Miami. I guess it's uh, it's better than not playing anyone, Cam. It is better than not playing anyone. Um, you know, and this is a game that I've been openly desiring all year long uh, since they redid the schedule. Uh, you know, added Louisville and Clemson. Uh, you know, and the one to one was really, you know, Clemson on and Duke off in the schedule. I'm just like, that's not what I want to see. They're not a good team this year at all. And I mean, you can debate about the good or the greatness or the, you know, abilities of Miami, but like Duke is bad, bad. Like, you know, nation's worst turnover margin, um, uh, ratio, excuse me, you know, things like I mean, they're they're really atrocious. And I've been watching these, these other teams just rolling up yards i was like bro like this is the year that they take them off the schedule like i need that get back you know we've lost them in consecutive years for the first time in the history of our program you know all kinds of stuff like that uh and then coming back off of covid um wake forest has covid issues this week so they had to cancel on their side um and then florida state they're missing their third consecutive game uh with their covid issues and they were supposed to go to Duke this week. So the easy solution is, hey, look, Miami was already going to go up to North Carolina. They were going to go. Uh, they were scheduled to go to Winston-Salem this week. So, hey, we'll just have them go to Durham instead, play Duke, you know, and, and just keep it moving. And, I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm excited um, because, like, we owe them a few couple. And this should be a time where we get some get back, you know. And I know that everybody's still like, oh, you know, Devin Hester was his 40th or whatever, 38th birthday. So let's – replay that uh, punt return that he had against Duke when they were one of the worst teams in captivity and things like that. And, you know, relive all those things. And that's great. But, like, yeah, I wanted them on the schedule. I was saying it all year long, and now it's come to pass. And, I mean, I'm excited. Like, we should go up and be able to, to roll up some points uh, on those boys. So, yeah. I knew Duke was bad. They had been good from about 2012 up until a couple of years ago. They had a bad season last year, 5-7. and seven. They were much worse in conference play. I knew that they were bad, but they've been completely off my radar. And yeah. somebody who's got about everybody on their radar, they've got to be pretty bad to be off the radar. Their last game was a few weeks ago against North Carolina. They lost that game by 32. They stayed within 11 of uh, NC State. Their one win in conference play was against Syracuse, 38-24. They lost to Virginia Tech by a touchdown. They lost to Virginia by 18. They lost to BC by 20. And Notre Dame was the opener. They stayed. Uh, actually, that was my one bit of Duke football this year. I watched maybe a quarter to a half against Notre Dame, and they stayed within two scores early, early in the season. All right, Duke and Miami. Of course, last year's, was that the one in the rain, in the torrential downpour? Yes. Yes. And then I'm not remembering. Oh, the, the game the previous season was – the two quarterbacks got yanked back and forth a few times and it was mm -hmm. kind of like an ugly 17, 13 kind of loss, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Not, uh, not good. Not pretty. But I mean, either way, you know, you're not, we're not supposed to lose to Duke. No, you know, not at all. Like, and especially not, I mean, and it had never happened until the last two years being, you know, consecutive years. So, uh, you know, I think that, that proves the point that it had not ever happened before, so it's not really supposed to happen. But, I mean, hey, let's go. Like, you know, line it up. You know, give me the revenge tour. You know, when uh, Miami was looking for an opponent this week, uh, as the ACC was looking for an opponent. But they had put the uh, precedents in place where it could have been a non-conference team. And so, then of course, it was like, hey, FIU, line it up. And FIU has not won a game since they beat us. They won that game, sure, fine, whatever. But they've not won another game since in the calendar year plus like line them up give me do like what fine cool if you want to look back at 2019 and enjoy that time that game or if you're duke those consecutive games fine line it up now because it's different now, I believe every conference should be prioritizing conference games, so I get it, especially right. Miami and Duke are division foes that typically play, of course, every year, so the conference should look out for its own and schedule mm -hmm. conference games. 
The Pac-12 is now stepping out, scheduling non-conference games. They've done that a couple times. They had a San Diego State-Colorado game this past weekend. Um, Now, the two games that were brought up at some point on social media that I would have loved to have seen, but again, I can understand the ACC wants conference games. Miami-BYU or Miami-Cincinnati. Now, those are two teams not playing this weekend. Correct. And, you know, BYU, uh, Washington had approached them and said, hey, we're off. You guys are off, you know, because of COVID issues with their opponents. But we can play. You can play. So let's play. And it was funny because at the very time, uh, you know, BYU put up like a thing on social media talking about any time or any team, anytime, anywhere. And then the next literal next day posted a thing from the athletic director saying, well, we're going to evaluate our situation. And, you know, though it could go down, we're going to actually – uh, use an abundance of caution and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, basically they wanted to see where they were in the college football playoff rankings. And then they came in exceedingly low. And then all of a sudden now, okay. In the aftermath, you know, moving forward, Hey, Miami, Hey, Cincinnati, Hey, whoever let's play, you know? And, uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, people did take to social media and say, you know, BYU and Miami, uh, could be a pairing, but, I mean, it's all it, it's a it's a lose lose for Miami. It's all win for BYU. You know, like on perception. On the, I mean, like we would have to blow them out. Anything other than that? Why? Anything other than that's a loss. I think. No, it's not. In terms of perception, for a team you know, that's been beating the likes of NC State and Virginia by three to five points the whole season, BYU's getting a lot of respect. Now they no, their schedule's been awful. No, I hear you, but I, what I'm saying is it is more – it would have been more advantageous for BYU well, to play us. Well, because to make a playoff. Right, than it would have been for us to play them. Sure. You know, that's where I'm coming from with it. Cincinnati, similarly, I would have loved, 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 loved that storyline of Danny Nose having gotten shit canned from here and being the running backs coach at Cincinnati now, uh, you know, having a game against them. Uh, with him on the staff that would have been fun for me uh you know but no yeah, exactly you know it, the easy thing and obviously you know the ACC already came out at the beginning before any games were played excuse me and said look all of our teams get one non-conference game and then all the other con- games are going to be conference games for this very reason so we can mix and match if something were to happen we can we have the test it we set the testing parameters and we control the schedule for all the teams anyway. So we can mix and match them, and then eh, we're in control. And then they did that. And, you know, with Florida State, that dumpster fire that they are, fine. You want to, you know, have an abundance of caution and or have only 30-something scholarship players available because of the rampant COVID issues that you're facing. Stay home. It's fine. Duke was already going to host a team from the state of Florida now. And they're going to continue to host, but a different team from way further south in the state of Florida. That's the easy thing. And you're prioritizing your own teams. You're prioritizing all of that. You know, you split your gate. You have the uh, the television is going to be on the ACC network at 8 p.m. So even if you have to, at the last minute, slot them in somewhere, we have a, com- or a, a conference-run television station. Whoop! Boom! It goes right. In the, it, it, it was just, it, it fit too easily and perfectly together. And, I mean, yeah, I think that it is the right decision. And I know that people might have looked at the BYU game if Miami were to have played BYU or if Miami were to have played Cincinnati being more of a a game with higher notoriety than playing the dregs of the earth known as the Duke Blue Devils in their current iteration for this season. And I agree that that's true. But, you know, if the ACC, and I think that this is true, the ACC is angling for two playoff spots, with Notre Dame and Clemson, they're uh, definitely angling for two, maybe three, pow- uh, you know, New Year's Six Bowl slots with Miami, Notre Dame, and Clemson. You know, because if you get two in the playoff, and then the next, you know, like you want as many teams in high-profile postseason spots as possible, and putting Miami against a bad Duke team as opposed to a team of quality of Cincinnati or BYU helps along that path. You cancel the games for Clemson and uh, Virginia, uh, and Notre Dame for next weekend, the 12th, Notre Dame already announced as going into the ACC championship game. 
uh, by the ACC in the announcement of their rescheduling and everything like that. It is it is Miami, or sorry, not Miami. It's the ACC being selfish at the root of the word. They are concerned with themselves. I don't care. They don't care about the SEC, the ACC, or the uh, Big Ten. Or the, hey, y'all do what y'all doing. We're doing what we can do for us in our conference to put ourselves in the strongest position possible. And I think that's what they've done. Well, if I have to be the one to deliver a reality check to BYU, you play a horrible schedule. It's not your fault. You piece together a schedule under the circumstances. You originally had a legitimate schedule. Okay, you're mm-hmm. nine and zero. Oh. Nobody that knows anything about college football believes that you would be nine and zero oh against a legitimate schedule because you don't go nine and zero oh typically. You run along at eight and five, seven and six, just about every year. Therefore, you're probably no different than that team that typically goes eight and five or seven and six. But against that schedule, against the San Antonios of the world, Texas San Antonios, you're nine and zero. Oh. Therefore, actually, this was an opportunity. And I'm not saying that they had this opportunity because the ACC took it away from them. But if they did, this is actually a win win, I believe, for BYU. Do they risk a loss? Well, most certainly they risk a loss, but they're not consi- they're not being seriously considered. Even before that ranking came out at number 14, even if that had ranking had been eight or nine, they weren't being seriously considered for this. Their schedule's not good enough. This would have been the opportunity to legitimize their schedule to a certain extent. No, true. And as I'm uh, clicking over to Twitter, I see that BYU is up one to 13th in the playoff rankings. Miami holds at 10 behind a two loss Iowa state that lost at home to Louisiana Lafayette and a two loss Georgia team, but okay, fine. But the other salient point is Notre Dame is at number two and Clemson is at number three. And if things play out the way that the ACC probably hopes, Clemson beats Notre Dame. It's a close enough game. And then you have both of those teams in the top four and then Miami going to the orange bowl. Like that's, you know, if thing, if, if, if you hold serve, you know what I mean? And things break the way that you pretty much want. And the thing is, and I know Notre Dame people are going to say, well, you hate Notre Dame. I do hate Notre Dame openly. Yes, this is true. But in terms of the ACC, they got to want Clemson to win and you got to want it to be close because if you have a two loss Clemson team, now it's uncertain if they can make the playoff. But if you have both those teams have one loss and they've been to each other and it's been two. if you get another ACC championship game, that's like that game weeks ago in South Bend, bro, you there's no way you're keeping one of those teams out. So from the ACC standpoint, yeah. And I mean, it's in position to get there. So, you know, you have those teams play this week. They cancel their games for the 12th. They play each other on the 19th. You know, I mean, if assuming Clemson beats Virginia Tech this weekend, which, I mean, come on. You know what I mean? But, I mean, that you, you, they're putting themselves in a strong spot. And, yeah, it would have been the chance for BYU to play a team with a pulse, a team, a top 10 ranked college football playoff contending team. But, you know, unfortunately for them, they didn't get that opportunity. And for us, you know, again, uh, focusing on ourselves and, you know, just moving forward. 